Now, we mentioned that we're tracking the utilization against the funded amount and the contract value. We need a place to enter that information. And we enter that information in the contract information screen. We access the contract information screen right off of the start page. Under setup and configuration, we'll select the option assign contract information to customers. And in making that selection, we then get this screen, which gives us essentially a different setup screen for each of our customers. So over here on the customer side, we're going to select which customer we're setting our information up for. Then we'll come over here for the particular customer, which in effect is the contract, and we will identify the contract type. Our choices are cost type, which would be for cost plus fixed fee type contracts, uh, firm fixed price, other flexibly priced, which could be some uh, variation on either uh, cost or T&M type contracts. We have time and materials type contracts here, and then we have commercial contracts as well. And then we have none, if it's none of these types, which in QuickBooks you may well know that you can enter all kinds of information in the customer screen. It may not necessarily be a contract for ICAT to work with. But once we've identified the contract type, we then have additional contract information that we need to record. We have contract number. That's the contract number that the government identifies for this contract. We have job number, which could be our own internal job number. It could be a task number, whatever you want to use it for. We have an inception date for the contract. And we have the funded amount and the contract value. And the funded amount and the contract value are values that the user enters into this screen. So once those values are entered into the screen, come back over here to the report and you'll see that we have the funded amount and the contract value. Those are coming from the contract information screen in the setup of ICAP. Now, let's take a look at the contract status report in the cost format. Cost format's a little different. For T&M type contracts, we're tracking hours and dollars available to be billed in the contract. In the cost format, we're doing it a little differently. We are tracking cost budgets, not budgets against the hours available. We're simply tracking the costs available. So what we want to do is we want to establish the end date of the report. And in doing so, ICAT will then pull the information out of QuickBooks on a historical basis up to the ending date of the report. And you'll see that the report period is contract inception through June 30th, 2008. And what we will then see is a column for each contract year on the contract up through the period in which we have uh, established in the header of the report. We also have an inception to date column for this report. And this inception to date column is providing us with a total of all activity in prior years as well as current year. We then have a budget column which for the moment is showing as empty but what we have to do is access the budget for this job in QuickBooks. Now in the T&M format report we were accessing the budget via the estimate screen in QuickBooks but for the cost type format contract status cost format we're actually accessing a budget that's been established for the job. And so we go over to QuickBooks. And we're not interested in the Create Estimate screen. What we're going to be looking at here now is a budget screen. And we access the budget screen in QuickBooks by clicking on the Company option and coming down to Planning and Budgeting and then Set Up Budgets. 
and in setting up the budgets, what we would then do is create a new budget. We would tell QuickBooks what budget year we're using to establish the budget. And for these particular contracts, we established the budgets in 2006. So we'll, we'll take a look at 2006. And then it's going to ask us additional P&L budget criteria. And we're either going to say no additional criteria or we can identify the job. And then it tells us a budget already exists. You can use the existing budget to create a new budget. Click finish. So we'll go ahead and click. And then we can select any of our jobs. The QuickBooks budget screen gives us a lot of options and way more than we actually need. So really all we need for the contract uh, budget to pass through onto our contract status report essentially are totals. And it can be the entirety of the contract it can be set up in just one screen here at QuickBooks. We're not particularly interested in parsing out this contract budget month by month and year by year. If we know how many labor dollars we have available in this contract, we can simply enter that in, in one field. So the contract began in 2006, so we're setting up a 2006, fiscal year 2006 budget for this job, and we're really just setting up a labor budget. We don't have any other budget activity for this contract, so we set up our labor budget. We can also set up our contract revenue budget. And once that information is entered in, we haven't parsed it out. This is for all of our contract years, but we're just entering it in in the first field available in this budget screen. So we're just putting the information in in the January 06 budget screen, at which point QuickBooks totals it up for us. So we can click Save and click OK. And then that budget information passes through to ICAT, but in ICAT, we have to tell the program what year in QuickBooks the budget was established. So we have to say, okay, we began this contract in 2006. We'll identify the budget year as 2006. And in doing so, ICAT then goes into QuickBooks, finds that budget information, brings it into the contract. What we then see is the labor budget and the inception date activity against that budget, and that shows what we have remaining. Let's presume this is a four-year contract. We're two and a half years through the contract. That's our budget for the entire four-year period, and that's the balance that we have remaining for labor costs. Now, we also have indirect costs that have to be covered by this contract. And ICAT is able to go through and apply the actual indirect rates against these uh, labor costs that have been utilized to then show how much indirect cost for each of these for each of these indirect cost pools and it's tracking actual activity for each of the years. But for the budget column, ICAT is utilizing the provisional billing rates to establish the indirect rate budgets for each of the indirect cost pools. These provisional rates, you may recall, are set up back on our indirect cost pool structure screen. When we entered in our pool and base setups for each of these indirect cost pools, we also have a field for entering in the provisional rate. So we set that provisional rate up for each of our cost pools in this screen, and that information then passes back over for this contract status cost format report. So it's applying the indirect budget utilizing the provisional billing rates. So we're in effect then tracking our actual labor costs against the labor budget 
and we're tracking our actual indirect costs against the prevailing provisional rate that's set up in the uh, setup screen in QuickBooks. And we're then able to track our activity against the budget and see what we have remaining. So the contract revenue is being tracked against the funded amount and against the contract value. Now recall that the funded amount and contract value are established in our contract information screen. So for this second job, this cost type contract, we have entered in our funded amount and our contract value in the contract information screen. So these two reports, in effect, the contract status report in a TNM format tracks our activity against the available hours and dollars to be billed, and the contract status report cost format tracks the costs that we've incurred against a cost budget. Each of these reports is also tracking our revenue against the funded value of the contract and against the total contract value to show the percentage of the contract that's been utilized and the percentage of the contract that is remaining for each of these thresholds. Each of these reports is useful for the project manager in tracking the overall status of the projects.